The Afrikaans language is spoken natively in South Africa, Eswatini, and in southern Namibia. It's also spread as an immigrant language to countries surrounding it, such as Lesotho, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Zambia, where it's spoken by small minorities of Afrikaners. Now, the Afrikaans language was probably, as you know, brought to South Africa by the Dutch in 1652. Though, as we will see in this video, that on its own is a far too simplistic explanation for the development of Afrikaans. Nevertheless, anywhere from 90 to 95% of Afrikaans lexicon does come from Dutch, and so the two are very similar languages, and I'll be attempting to do both in this video. So if we have an Afrikaans phrase like, verstaan jij mij, you would say in Dutch, versta je mij. So clearly very closely related. And you might then go on to say, dan kan ons saam praat, which in Dutch would be, dan kunnen wij samen praten. So there are some differences, but clearly they are related and mutually intelligible to a certain degree. When most people think of Afrikaans, they probably associate it most strongly with the people called the Boers. And many people will also know that the Boers or die Boere are simply the name refers to farmers, as this is the Dutch word. They likely associate them with the voortrekkers who went out into the South African interior, these cowboy-like, gun-toting, religiously reformed Christians who were quite racist and ended up doing apartheid. But as we'll find out in this video, Afrikaans has a very rich and diverse history, and there is a lot more to the story than these simple stereotypes about the language and its development. For example, that some of the first self-conscious Afrikaans that was written and not seen as being Dutch was written in the Arabic alphabet by Muslims rather than in the Latin alphabet as most Afrikaans is today. Furthermore, today around 13.5% of South Africa's population speak Afrikaans as a first language. That's around 61% of white people in South Africa. But did you know that 76% of an ethnic group known locally as coloreds speak Afrikaans as their first language? And historically, Afrikaans has as much been viewed as their language as the language of the predominantly white Afrikaners or Boers. So in this video, I want to focus in on a specific group and look at their contribution to the Afrikaans language and the Afrikaans Arabic script and the manuscripts written there. So this may be a contender for the most ambitious linguistic crossover following the Native American Basque Creole language that I was talking about. So to answer the question about where this Arabic script in South Africa comes from, let's go back to 1652 when the Dutch arrived in the Cape and set up the Cap Colony, the Cape Colony around Table Bay. Now, of course, Dutch people went and moved there to settle in this new colony as a way station between Europe and Asia for VOC ships. They brought with them the Dutch language, although many of them came from South Holland. And so most Afrikaans can be traced back to the dialects of South Holland and Zeeland, which is interesting in itself. However, if there were only Dutch people coming, then you might expect the relationship between Dutch and Afrikaans to be somewhat similar to that between British and American English. Yet the gap does seem to be a little bit further in certain ways between the two. And that's because the Dutch, as well as bringing Dutch settlers over, also needed people to do laborious tasks around the Cape Colony. And so they imported slaves and other servants from different parts of the Dutch Empire, many of which came from what is today Indonesia and Malaysia. They were brought over in significant numbers and would become a distinct ethnic group in the colony as they intermixed with many of the native Dutch people as well down the line. Now, the majority language that was spoken by these people was Malay, and so these people would become known as the Cape Malays, even though not all of them were actually Malaysian or even spoke Malay as a first language. What united them was a largely common belief in Islam 
Islam, as Islam had spread to this part of Southeast Asia in the 15th century, and so while they were fairly new converts, this was a binding factor that held this ethnic group together. Linguistically, they were quite diverse, speaking many different languages that are found throughout the Indonesian archipelago and throughout modern Malaysia, including, including the various versions of Malay, Javanese, Sudanese, Chinese, Hindi, and many other languages. These have left their mark on the modern Afrikaans language as well, as we can see here. Now, most of these words are also present in Dutch and probably came through Dutch as the Dutch VOC traders were also active in the regions and many of them learned to speak the native uh, Malay dialects as well as these Cape Malay coming to South Africa. There are also many that are found in English, for example, words like bamboo, gong, the current form of Japan, uh, and sarung, which are also in English. And there are some that, uh, particularly for me, make me think of my grandfather, such as the word rampoker, which was the word that he always used to describe the Indonesian militias uh, against which he fought in the Dutch East Indies during the campaign there in the 1940s. In any case, most of these people from Malaysia and other areas from East Asia would go on to learn Dutch to some form because they were servants working for Dutch families, they had to be able to communicate with them. However, this Dutch was not always grammatically perfect Dutch as they didn't get a formal education in the language, nor did they need it. And so instead of it being a standard Dutch, a kind of simplified Dutch, at least to Dutch listeners, with infusions of words from their native languages and grammatical forms that were different to standard Dutch emerged and this would be called Combostal and this in English is kitchen language because it was the language of the kitchen. It was largely based on Dutch because there were many different language varieties around but ultimately it had its own flavor that was different to let's say the living room Dutch, the standard Dutch that was being spoken by the higher class Dutch citizens that were living there. And so for a long time, this language was known as Coco Hollands or Kitchen Dutch. And this is one of the ancestors of the Afrikaans language. Now, other elements that were added in are the languages, various African languages spoken by different slaves that were brought to the Cape Colony by the Dutch that were settled there. And so they also would input some of their own linguistic features into what would become Afrikaans, as well as, of course, the the basis, the standard for Afrikaans being the Dutch language that was spoken by the Dutch colonists in the area, as well as the Koka Hollands language or mixed language that was spoken by many of the servants in the Cape Colony during this time. The history and development of the Afrikaans language is a fascinating and complicated subject, which I can do a specific video about if people are interested. So let me know in the comments below. But let's now return to the Cape Malay as many of these people that were brought over to South Africa were already Muslim by the time they arrived. And interestingly enough, the Islamic faith spread through many other of the servant enslaved populations in South Africa during this time as well. This is because unlike other colonial powers such as the Spanish, who were incredibly keen to convert all the peoples they met to Christianity, the Dutch in the Cape Colony were large slaveholders for the most part, and they saw it as immoral to enslave fellow Christians. And so they actually discouraged preaching among the slaves because they didn't want to own Christian slaves as they would then be forced to set them free. And so instead, Islam was the religion that largely spread through enslaved populations, both those from Southeast Asia and those from other parts of Africa, such as Madagascar and East Africa. It wouldn't be until 1793, however, that they would be permitted to build their first mosque. And so before that time, Islam was probably probably kept alive in secret meetings and by preachers that had come over from Southeast Asia as well. Now, the first madrasa or mosque was built on Dorpstraat and it still exists today in Cape Town. If you are there, you can uh, visit it. And in this madrasa, the language of instruction, this is a, a madrasa more specifically, is a, is a school, an Islamic school that uh, teaches uh, young men at the time in Islamic tradition. And the language of instruction there was Malay, as this was understood by enough of the population at the time and was their language of communication among themselves. 
a very specific set of circumstances would lead to Afrikaans becoming the language of instruction and Arabic being the script in which the Afrikaans language would be written. This was because uh, throughout the 18th century and continuing in the 19th century when the British took over the Cape Colony, it was forbidden for people from Southeast Asian descent to learn the Latin alphabet. However, they did learn the Arabic script or the Arabic alphabet, to put it that way, in the madrasa schools. However, the vast majority of people couldn't speak Arabic. So while they could read what was written, which is essential for Muslim practice and prayer, they couldn't speak and understand the Arabic language. The counterpart to it was that they did switch over to the Cape Dutch language, so they started to speak Cape Dutch, but because they weren't allowed to learn to read the Roman alphabet or Latin letters, they couldn't read and write in Cape Dutch. So it was a very interesting situation where they could read the Arabic script but not understand the Arabic language and they could understand the Dutch or Cape Dutch language but they couldn't read the script. Now it's thought that the switch from Malay being the main language of the Cape Malay community um, going over to the Cape Dutch language that was spoken occurred around 1815, with the first of these manuscripts being produced around 1845, though it no longer survives to this day. The main reason given why this switch occurred is probably because of the conversion and already Muslim populations of African descended slaves in the Cape Colony also going to the mosque and the madrasa because they were also Muslim. So now the people from Malaysia and the Indonesian archipelago came into contact with Africans from various parts of Africa that had initially spoken their own language because they were all Muslim. And it's earlier than the Malay population starts to speak Dutch that the African slave communities and the mixed communities that were mixed with both Dutch and African descent switched over to speaking Cape Dutch. And it's probably through this pressure with them being in the same mosques and religious community, the need to be understood was very important. And so that the Malay or the Cape Malay community also switched over to speaking Cape Dutch instead of Malay around 1815. And soon after this, we start to get the first texts that are written in an Arabic script, but the language of the text is the Cape Dutch language, which is important to realize because for a long time people saw that it was written in Arabic script and assumed that the language was also Arabic, just as you can use the same alphabet to write English or French. The languages are different, but the alphabet is the same. So for instance, this passage is a sunnah from the Quran, which says in Afrikaans, and the Koningskap is by the Hua Allah to Allah, and Warlik Allah to Allah is the Bas van alle dinge. So that's simply a part of the Quran that is written in the Arabic script, but in the Afrikaans language. Now these are mostly referred to, these manuscripts, a word in Arabic is Ajami, to uh, describe them. And there are around 75 that have come down to us today, although we think that there probably were quite a few more, as they are very much widespread throughout the Cape Malay community and haven't properly uh, been brought to, to one place and the likelihood is that quite a few have been lost. Now some scholars would prefer to uh, refer to this collection as Ajami, although previous scholarship has coined it the Arabic Afrikaans and that's the video I'm going to, uh, or the term I'm going to be using throughout this video because it is more popular in scholarship. Now, one of the earliest texts, or possibly even the earliest uh, surviving text that we have of this corpus is the Hidyat al-Islam. Uh, and this translates to, in Afrikaans, the uh, al setting from the Chotzdins, which in English is the exposition of the religion. And as we'll see, the, pretty much all of these texts are very religious in nature and, and refer to the teaching of uh, Islamic doctrine, clarifications of Sharia and commentary on the Quran, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at a passage, and I've chosen this pas passage specifically because one, it was available online,
line and two because in this manuscript right afterwards we also get a standardized version in let's say standard Afrikaans which was standard for the time period but is no longer standard Afrikaans so that's quite interesting. I will do my best with the reading here. So in this passage we read Ik begint disi kitab met Allah ta Allah sy naam. Allah ta'ala es risk gevaar een dunja ver al wat lievandig is. Allah ta'ala es bierengar een die genaad een dag agirat ver al die mesi aan jens wat oogap iman gedood had. Al die dank aan Parijs es reeg ver Allah ta'ala alleen. Allah ta'ala had gegeef voor Awans Islam sein Agama. And so in more standardized Afrikaans, this would be Ek begin hier die boek met Allah, hy is verhewe se naam. Allah, hy is verhewe, is onderhouer in die wereld, weer al wat levendig is. Allah, hy is verhewe, is brenger in die paradijs, in die laaste dag vir al die mense en jins wat oop iman gedoen het in die geloof gesterwe het. Al die dank en prees is reg vir Allah, hy is verhewe alleen. Allah had gegeef vir ons Islam se godsdienst. So you can see uh, quite a few differences between the two texts, but still very clearly the first text is in Afrikaans, although obviously these versions have been transcribed so that they are in the Latin script so that I can read them. Now let's take a look at just the first sentence to compare a little bit between the uh, Arabic Afrikaans as it's written and let's say the standardized Afrikaans. So in the Arabic Afrikaans we have Ik begint disi kitab met Allah ta'ala sein naam. And in the standard Afrikaans we have Ek begin hier die boek met Allah hy is verhewe sy naam. Now, while these are clearly very much related, it's very interesting to spot some of the linguistic things that are happening here, and even to insert the, if we insert the standard Dutch, we can see where some of these differences may have come from. So very interesting, first of all, is the pronoun. So we have ik or ik or ek, which is I. And we can see that in the ik we have a kind of glide that's coming in, a diphthong, whereas uh, Dutch has ik and Afrikaans has ek. So it's kind of an in-between phase a little bit between these two phases in the linguistic development. A second point which is quite interesting is that in standard Afrikaans we have hirdi, which means this, whereas in the Arabic Afrikaans text we have disi. Now this is quite interesting because that disi might be from the Dutch deze, which also means this. Although I've put that in standard Dutch in this context you would say ik begin dit boek this book rather than deze book because uh, it has a difference in, in gender, the word book, something that Afrikaans has completely lost, which is again interesting. Another interesting feature is uh, the possessive pronoun. So in the Arabic Afrikaans we have sein naam, his name, whereas in standard Afrikaans it is se naam. Now the sein naam looks a lot more like the Dutch possess a pronoun of sein naam, his name. So it's possible that it is a, a more in-between stage uh, that standard Afrikaans has developed further from Dutch than this Arabic Afrikaans. Another interesting point to note as well, as I'm sure you will have noticed, is that the word kitab does not at all look related to the word book in Dutch or book in Afrikaans. And that's correct because kitab is actually the Arabic word for book. And so there are quite a few words that appear even in just that one little paragraph that I read out, which are not standard Afrikaans words or influence from Dutch at all, but are rather from Arabic or from Malay. So we have words like kitab, which means book. We have dunya, which means world. We have uh, in, in the text it appears as uh, gannat, but uh, based on the Arabic jenna or jennat, uh, meaning the paradise or, or the, the afterlife, it, maybe it was pronounced different uh, and more like jannat, which would make more sense. There are also some words that I believe come from Malay. So agama, which I looked up was religion, which fits with the standardized translation. 
Um, there's also Rasulullah, which is the the uh, name of the of the Prophet of Muhammad uh, of, of Allah, so Muhammad, um, which again is borrowing from Arabic. And then there are two more terms from Malay, Dalil, which uh, is is evidence or argument in Malay. And I believe that uh, the the uh, mention of ilms is from ilmu, which is people that are in the know about religion, religious scholars, or something similar in Malay. One thing that I already commented on somewhat uh, in the passage is the diphthongs that we can see here, which are quite interesting. So the diphthongs that we find, for example, the kind of glides that we see in ik, achiafar, and ias, and ian. Um, which is very interesting because this uh, is quite different to what we see in Dutch and I think is a, a somewhat transitional uh, phase a little bit with what you see in Afrikaans where you would get words like ek and eem. Um, but what it could also be is reflecting the pronunciation of the Cape Malay Dutch speakers because we don't know exactly how they were speaking Dutch. We can assume that it's a non-standard way of speaking Dutch just as the uh, voortrekkers or the, the boeren who had migrated away from the Cape Colony at this point, their Dutch also developed in a, a different way that would eventually also contribute to Afrikaans being different. Although what's interesting is that up until even into the 1920s and 30s, uh, most of the white people that used Dutch as a written language used standard Dutch, so Dutch from the Netherlands, as their written language, even while they spoke what is clearly a, a different language, you know, Afrikaans, while they were speaking that, they didn't start to write that until quite a bit later. So this is a very interesting source in that way, because it shows a little bit about the phonetics of the Afrikaans or the Cape Dutch being spoken, at least by the Cape Malay, during this period in the 19th century. Although it's difficult because all of this has to be transcribed from Arabic, and of course Arabic has not been designed to write down a Germanic language like Cape Dutch or, or Afrikaans. So that makes it very interesting, uh, as does the fact that most of these texts weren't actually written down by Cape Malays at all, but rather by various Muslim scholars whose first languages were languages like Turkish, Arabic or Kurdish, because most of them came from the Ottoman Empire, and a lot of the manuscripts themselves were actually printed in Constantinople, and then, or Istanbul rather, and were then brought to South Africa by Muslim teachers who had been sent to aid the Muslim communities in the Cape Colony. They had quite a challenge because they had to adapt the Arabic writing system to the phonology of the Afrikaans language. And so there were 29 characters in the Arabic Afrikaans alphabet, or Alif Bey, to be more accurate to use the Arabic terms. Now, 20 of these came from the bog standard Arabic uh, script itself. But several others had to be supplied, so some were supplied from the Persian version, so to write Farsi they had to make new characters, and also Turkish, which at that point was still written in the Arabic script before their secularization following the First World War and the loss of the Ottoman Empire, was also written in the Arabic script, so they used some from Turkish. But what was especially important for Afrikaans was the distinction between the elongation of vowels, so long and short vowels, which for Dutch and Afrikaans still today is important because it can change the whole meaning of words. And so they actually manipulated the system of uh, digraphs that you get in Arabic to be able to show more words as well in Arabic and, and more distinction between the characters. Using this system, Muslim writers would go on to produce texts throughout the 19th century and into the early 20th century at which point it stopped around 1930. Now, writing in what is a very useful article that I'll link in the description below, uh, Sulaiman Esor Dangor notes about why he believes that the Afrikaans Arabic writing stopped and hasn't been picked up since. So he refers first to another of the scholars that has talked about this, which is David's, who attributes the subsequent demise of Arabic Afrikaans literature to two factors, namely the emergence of Afrikaans religious texts in Roman script 
and the emergence of Muslim mission schools. I believe that there are several other factors which Davids did not consider. Among the most important of these are the following. The gradual switch from communicating in Afrikaans to using English as the preferred medium of communication, and the fact that students began travelling for Islamic studies to Arab-speaking countries such as Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which meant that Arabic came to hold a place of eminence among these graduates. While this form of writing and the use of Afrikaans with the Arabic script has disappeared, the Cape Malays in South Africa certainly have not and are still an existing community that can be found today with their own cultural and uh, I hear they have very good cuisine as well in Cape Town uh, and so are still a distinct group that remember their history and their ethnicity. During the apartheid era from 1948 to 1994, the Cape Malays were grouped under the rest of the coloreds um, and their position was a little bit ambiguous as to exactly where they fit in. During this period, especially when writing about the history of the Afrikaans language, their contribution as well as the contribution of other non-white people to the development of Afrikaans was very much overlooked until it was discovered that these manuscripts that were written in the Arabic script, which everyone had assumed would be written in Arabic, were actually studied properly and people found that the language within them was actually an early form of Afrikaans or Cape Dutch. So anyway, I think that's a pretty cool story and I wanted to share it with you here on the channel because people seem to enjoy videos about the wacky places the Dutch ended up and some of the linguistic things about that. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more videos on the development of Afrikaans and whether it should be classed as some kind of Creole or Pidgin language or a mixed language or whether it is a direct descendant from Dutch that has simply been influenced by other languages uh, and a period of isolation of being away from the mother tongue. I hope to people that speak Afrikaans, that speak Arabic and Malay that I haven't butchered your beautiful languages too much. I have done my best to get some of the pronunciations right but um, I am not fluent in any of those uh, although I do quite like some Afrikaans language music. Uh, music. I can't even speak English at this point. Uh, some of the music from there is pretty cool. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what kind of things you would like to see me cover in next videos. Check out some of the other videos in the comments and the sidebar and hit the uh, bell notification if you want to be notified on when I next upload. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been Hilbert and this has been The History. Bye donkey. Tramakasi, thank you, Livel. Terimakasi, shukran lak. Thank you, and I think that's pretty much every language uh, that I covered in this video. So, see you soon.